Coming up on DTNS, Oracle pulls a Chinese government move on TikTok. Facebook crosses a Rubicon, or maybe it's a Volga. In this case, and Patrick Norton lets us know if it's time to try buying a GPU again. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, March 11th, 2022 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. Somewhere in St. Louis, I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Roger Chang, the show's producer. There is a longer version of the show called Good Day Internet that's flipping up its format starting Monday. If you'd like to get DTNS and more, subscribe to it. Patreon.com slash DTNS. Also, big thanks to our top patrons. Today, they include Tim Ashman, Johnny Hernandez, and High Tech Oki. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. The Financial Conduct Authority, or FCA, is warning cryptocurrency ATM operators in the UK to shut down. The FCA uh -oh. says that the crypto firms who've registered with it haven't been granted permission to operate ATM services, and as a result, operating crypto ATMs is illegal. The Telegraph reports that there are around 81 functional crypto ATMs in Britain, at least at this time, based on data from the Coin ATM radar tracker, the majority of which are in supermarkets and convenience stores. Meta announced Code Verify. It's a Chrome browser extension that verifies the content of WhatsApp's web app uh, to make sure it hasn't been tampered with. It's not an unusual situation. It just hadn't been applied to WhatsApp before, so they're, they're using it. It works by automatically comparing a hash of code in the browser with a hash held by Cloudflare. So pretty simple. The extension doesn't read messages. No data is sent to Cloudflare. No data is sent to Meta. Uh, it's just making sure that your extension hasn't been tampered with. A Firefox version of the extension is coming soon. Regulators in the EU and UK have opened an antitrust probe into Google's agreements with Facebook, now Meta, over online advertising. U.S. regulators are all inve also investigating the agreements. Google and Facebook reached agreements on minimum and maximum bids, which aren't unusual in the advertising space. However, the concern is that the relative dominance of the two companies means that the agreements had an outsized and anti-competitive effect on the overall advertising market. The Reserve Bank of India has blocked Paytm from signing up new customers pending an audit of its IT systems. Uh, Paytm is one of the biggest online payment systems in India, so it's kind of a big deal. It will continue to be able to process transactions while the audit is conducted. Just can't sign up new folks. In a fin final ruling issued on Thursday, U.S. regulators eliminated the need for automated vehicle manufacturers to build fully autonomous vehicles with manual driving controls designed to meet crash standards. Back in February, just last month, General Motors and its self-driving unit crews asked the U.S. National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration for permission to build and also deploy a self-driving vehicle without human controls, without an ability for a human to even get in there later if necessary. Steering wheels, brake pedals, that's the sort of thing a human would need. Of note, the NHSTA's rule says that children shouldn't occupy the traditional driver's seat, given that the driver's seating position hasn't been designed to protect children in a crash. But if a child were to be in that seat, the car would not immediately be required to cease motion. Yeah, so slowly catching up with the regulations. All right. Uh, that's a big step for autonomous cars, though, is, is the ability to to not have to put in stuff it doesn't need to have in there if it gets to a fully autonomous level five kind of situation. All right, let's talk a little bit more about this is going to be like a retro story going going back to, to TikTok and the, the Committee on Foreign Investment. Tell us all about it, Sarah. Let's harken back to 2020. Remember that great year? Wow, so many great things happened uh, uh, so among them. Memories. The U.S. government threatened to make ByteDance sell its U.S. TikTok operations and companies like Microsoft and Oracle angled to get a piece. China made moves to stop that, and a new U.S. president did not continue that push. But the Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S. did formally order ByteDance to divest itself of U.S. operations. ByteDance successfully obtained a preliminary junction to stop a sale, and the story kind of faded away from public view. We were, we had other things to think about, but the deal making kept going. It's been going on behind the scenes and it looks like a settlement may have been achieved. 
Reuters sources say that Oracle will get a contract to manage U.S. user data for TikTok. So this isn't a sale. It's a agreement. It's a partnership. Go BuzzFeed. Ahead. BuzzFeed says seven current and former TikTok employees said the so-called Project Texas, as it is known internally, at least uh, according to some people, has been ongoing for months. Right now, in the U.S., TikTok data is hosted somewhere in the U.S. or in Singapore. None of it is hosted in China. However, that may be changing. Oracle is reportedly cloning some TikTok systems like tracking and analytics tools, the kinds of things that report content by vitality and how well the algorithm is doing. All U.S. data would be hosted in the U.S. and processed by Oracle. That is part of the agreement, at least as it stands right now. And tools would be maintained by a new U.S.-based team called U.S. Tech Services. That team would report to middle managers at TikTok in the U.S. who report to ByteDance execs in China. Two people told BuzzFeed they're looking at ways to legally restrict the Chinese executives from having access to U.S. tech services for information. This is similar to what a lot of U.S. companies do in China currently, where they operate cloud services, but the data for the services is maintained by a Chinese company. Microsoft's operations in China go through 21 Vianet, and Amazon works with uh, Ning CS, uh, Western Cloud Data Technology, and also Synet. Yeah, so uh, first of all, if if you thought uh, that that was all just a... a, a I don't know, some kind of fake thing. Uh, when you get the Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S. to investigate something, they investigate it, and they keep investigating it until they're satisfied uh, one way or the other, and they mm. have been continuing to investigate it. Uh, you know, the hot, buzzy news went other places, but the, the committee kept doing the work that it was ordered to do, and they weren't ordered to stop, uh, so they came up with this. And I remember... Maybe I'm remembering the way I want to remember, but I remember back when this story was new saying, I doubt they're going to make TikTok sell part of itself, but I could see them coming to an arrangement that China has, where China makes the local data be held by a local company. And it looks like that's what's actually going to happen. Oracle is going to be the provider of that data here uh, in this case, but it will be very similar to what China does. And so China will have less of a, of a leg to stand on in objecting to it. I gotta say, I I really thought the Oracle deal was dead, um, and that just goes to show you how much goes on behind the scenes uh, when we all pay attention to the other shiny things. Yeah, just because you're not hearing everyone scream about something doesn't mean it has stopped. We were distracted, for what that's worth. I mean, we also also we can't keep track of every single thing that's happening in the world, right? People sort of yeah. pretend like you can know everything, and if you haven't heard about it, it must not be happening. And it's like absolutely impossible for that to be true. I think you can. I don't know about the rest of us, Tom. No, I don't. Even I can't. Even I. Uh, nobody can. Come on. All right. If Tom uh, can't. No one can. I will try, though, even if I can't. Uh, and here's an example. Uh, lots of news related to Russia to round up for you today. Uh, we'll start with the briefer things and get to the more uh, more complex things. The National Computer Network Emergency Response Technical Team Coordination Center of China says that IP addresses that appear to be coming from the United States, Germany, and the Netherlands, mostly from the U.S., though, have been taking control of computers in China in order to launch attacks on internet targets in Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine. If you're like, that sounds familiar, usually the story goes the other direction, that mm -hmm. you're usually hearing someone accuse Russia of hijacking computers in China and using China Chinese IP addresses to launch an attack on the U.S. So uh, China's saying it's going the other direction now. Uh, also, we've noted before on the show that about 50 percent of the world's neon gas used for chip lithography is refined in Odessa, Ukraine, and apparently in Mariupol, uh, too, which is being heavily bombarded. Reuters uh, says that Ukraine's neon refinement has halted. They have confirmed it with both of the companies that do it. It may be difficult for those companies to reopen later uh, because machines might get damaged. Uh, they, Even if the machines aren't damaged by bombing, they may not be able to get the raw materials since 90% of the world's neon gas is a byproduct of steel manufacturing in Russia. Uh, the largest chip makers do say that they have secured their own neon supplies for now, but smaller chip makers may run into shortages now that these, these 
refineries have been shut down for a while. Reserve supply estimates vary from a few months to a year, but it could take nine months to two years for alternative suppliers to get up and running and fill the gap. So the most optimistic scenario is you fill that gap, you know, right at the time you need it, but that may not happen. Also, in 12 Eastern European countries, Meta's Facebook and Instagram are allowing a spirit of the policy, in their words, exemption to hate speech rules. Uh, this relates to uh, the posts in, uh, that object uh, or, or that if the object of the post is a Russian soldier, uh, someone who is not a prisoner of war. They say if it's prisoner of war, it's a different matter. But if you're talking about Russian soldiers, we assume you mean the Russian military. And if your post is clearly related to the war in Ukraine, then we won't bring the hammer down. The policy will continue to prohibit hate speech against ordinary Russian citizens, however. And this is getting lost in a lot of the rhetoric around this. The exemptions are only allowed in these countries. Armenia, Azerbaijan, Estonia, Georgia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Romania, Russia, Slovakia, and Ukraine. In other words, countries bordering Ukraine. A Meta spokesperson told Reuters it will also make an exemption to allow praise of a hate group, uh, an extremist militia in eastern Ukraine. Uh, and the Meta spokesperson said, quote, strictly in the context of defending Ukraine, or in their role as part of the Ukraine National Guard. In other words, again, they're not encouraging those posts. They're saying, when we see that, if it's defending Ukraine or as part of the Ukraine National Guard, we won't remove it's the allowed. post at that point. We'll yeah. leave it where it is. In response to all of that, Russian prosecutors asked a court to designate Meta as an extremist organization itself and prohibit its activities in Russia. Russia's communications regulator also announced it will issue a block on Instagram. They're giving folks 48 hours, so March 14th, uh, to get time to get your photos off the platform if you're in Russia. Facebook had already been restricted in Russia, so Instagram joins that. No action is contemplated against WhatsApp because they say that is mostly a messaging app, whereas Facebook is a platform, Instagram is a platform. Uh, Facebook has 7.5 million Russian users. Instagram, if you're wondering, like, why didn't they just block Instagram at the beginning? Instagram has 50.8 million Russian users. And WhatsApp, interestingly, has 67 million Russian users. You know, of all of the uh, all the information in this story, um, what caught my eye, at least at first, as I was trying to make sense of it, was, wow, okay, Russia, uh, uh, Russian Facebook users, 7.5 million. Not a lot of, you know, considering the size of the country. Instagram, 50.8 million. WhatsApp the most with 67 million. And the fact that WhatsApp is, at least at this point of this recording, uh, not uh, being, um, I don't know, uh, technically shuttered, right? The way that the others are um, is 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 sort of telling because that's what most people are using. Well, and and Patrick, we can't hear you right now. I don't know if you, you muted yourself, but uh, but yeah, we're you're talking about WhatsApp is end and encrypted too, so there's there's less of an ability to control the message on WhatsApp. Go ahead, Patrick. Well, I was going to say for a lot of people uh, outside of the U.S., WhatsApp is this primary. It's what they use instead of texting. Um, <laughs> in a lot of cases. And uh, uh, I can see that creating as many problems for them internally as it would, you know what I mean? I, I think they lose more by shutting it down than they gain by shutting it down. But the thing with Facebook slash meta is, you know, it just, it's, it's, it's so a part of everything else they've been doing. It's just, I don't know. I, got I, I think, uh, I think that a lot of people will look at this and have an opinion on whether this or that message should or should not be allowed. Uh, I would encourage you when thinking about this to, to separate yourself from that and say, well, what if it wasn't Russia? What if it wasn't Ukraine? Uh, you know, what if it was Yemen? Uh, what if it was uh, the Tigray region? What if, what if it was Mali? What if it was one of these other wars? Uh, why isn't Facebook coming in and saying, well, in this case, it's okay to criticize the Saudi military, or it's okay to criticize the Yemen Revolutionary Guard. Uh, it does feel a little bit like they are making it up as they go along. Well, I mean, for them to actually announce a policy beforehand seems kind of unusual for Meta. 
Uh, and two, you know, it's never too late to virtue signal when you've made a name change in an effort to rebrand your organization to make it more palatable to any of a number of investigations and or futures. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to I don't want to be cruel to Facebook. I mean, yeah, uh, um, but, <laughs> I, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a it's an it's an interesting move for them. You know, I wonder if they'll remember to change their policies when this if and when this thing winds itself up. Um, if you saw, um, th there was, for some reason, I can't pull it up right now. Um, I'm not sure if, if it's been taken down, but there was an original writer story about the spirit of the policy exemption that you had had laid out uh, a couple of minutes ago, Tom, as it relates to hate speech rules and what is allowed in the context of the war, depending on where you live um, and what platform you're using. And that caused a ton of confusion, um, you know, even among a lot of journalists that I like and respect who are, you know, trying to figure out, okay, at this point, you know, what what is responsible reporting in the sense of this is the tweet that a respected news organization, uh, you know, has laid out that could be construed in a way that isn't necessarily what the story is. Yeah, and I... I... <sighs> I think it you can you can overreact to this uh, because it is limited to certain countries. It is limited to military action, and I and there's it's understandable that you know tempers are running high, but it is also one-sided, and it also isn't following a clearly established previous principle, uh, as far as I can tell. One more wrinkle that that uh, is related to the the war in Ukraine uh, that might have some long-term effects on how the internet works. Russian websites can often not renew their existing TLS certificates right now because sanctions prevent payment processing. And that means no HTTPS. And if you don't have HTTPS these days, that means your browser is likely to warn you, even if that site is a totally legitimate site. Uh, Russia's Ministry of Digital Development is offering free TLS certificates uh, to things like the Bank of Russia, uh, et cetera. However, for a certificate authority to be set up and respected and has to be trusted by the browsers. So far, so far, only the Yandex browser and some Atom products are recognizing these new Russian certificates. You can manually add that certificate authority to Chrome and Firefox uh, if you trust the provider. That is until that provider is actively blocked as part of the certificate revocation list. Now, right now, this certificate is not, so you could add it if you want. Uh, so there's two questions. One is if the browser makers will add this to their CA list so that you don't have to, or will they discover that this certificate authority is intercepting traffic, as some people suspect might be the case, uh, in which case they would add it to the revocation list. Uh, further causing the splinter net, uh, as they call it. So one to file away in the back of your mind for a future day, if you see a story about Russian websites uh, being pushed off the internet or something, if you see certificate authorities come up, it'll be useful to know about this. Hey, if you have a thought about something on the show uh, and you want to send us an email, it might be handy to have our email address. So here it is, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Send us an email, please. Last week, Tech Radar's Alex Whitelock uh, published a story on TechRadar.com about falling GPU prices. He said at the time that the trend was looking good, but we still had a ways to go. Patrick's been looking at this himself, uh, digging into the numbers, and has some information for folks wondering when it's going to be safe to try to buy a GPU again. What do you found, Patrick? Oh, my goodness. So uh, one props to, to Alex Whitelock and uh, Tech Radar reader Ted. Uh, the reader actually has been tracking GPU prices and the chart that was posted goes from uh, November 21 and then the peak at, of course, right around Christmas of 21. And then you just watch this and the max price on, on like a 3090 was three thousand and twenty four dollars. Uh, right before uh, in, in that Christmas shopping holiday madness. In that Christmas frenzy. Yeah, yeah. Christmas frenzy. And in, as of uh, the middle of February in 2022, it was down to 2,362, which is still more than I ever planned to play for an entire gaming machine. So the prices are down, right? Um, and part of this is, is it, Tom and I were talking about this the other day. I talked to a friend of mine who's who's deep in the mining community. I talked to other uh, a couple other people. Like the biggest thing is probably um, Ethereum switching to proof of stake, 
which means you know when people buy a GPU to Bitcoin mine, they they expect to make a certain amount of money off of it, and the ability to, to essentially make money mining Ethereum off of cards is is just basically going to end in the yeah. distant future. Because proof so, of work means your computer is putting in the work to crunch numbers. Proof of stake is like we're just going to use what you've got, so you don't yeah. have to run that GPU hot. Yeah. Yeah, so you know the GPUs. I mean, I, you know, it, it could be a great time to buy a used GPU in the none too distant future. So it feels like the supply chain is actually catching up. Um, That's and, good. You know, kind of the TLDR on this is you can buy cards right now, which is weird. Uh, you know, so for like for the first time in eighteen months, I think I can buy almost any GPU I want from AMD or Nvidia, right? And of course, we also should point out that that Intel is going to be coming online later this year with their discrete GPUs, right? Uh, there are tons of cards in stock at Newegg being sold and shipped by Newegg. Uh, Micro Center has cards in stock. Uh, not I'm waiting at 9 a.m. on Tuesday or Thursday or Friday when the truck shows up and I see what shows up in the truck. But literally, I can't buy it online, but I can see that they have in some cases, dozens of cards and particular models in stock. I haven't seen that in forever. Um, you know, it's it's a little crazy to see. They are still painfully expensive, um, mm. which is you know, a big deal. The, you know, the $249 price of that RTX 3050, definitely a fantasy. I'm seeing $420 to $490 for those. The not so beloved AMD 6500 XT, uh, you know, I've seen it as low as like $230 on its $199 MSRP. That's so if you're desperate, almost acceptable. Like uh, almost. They, we're, we're in we're in shouting distance of like, okay, fine, I'll pay a little premium to get it. Yeah, I, I'm gonna call that a 10% vig on a card at this point is more than acceptable. I can deal yeah, with yeah. 10% vig. Um, so eBay listings for uh, I'm gonna use scare quotes here, uh, new and unopened box, uh, are are lower than new. Newegg, for example, on 3080s, oh, wow. uh, or some Amazons. You know, I'm not going to be as patient as uh, Alec Whitelock's reader in tracking the number or the numbers on the auctions. But of course, that also varies on auctions and what time the auction ends, and fear of missing out, and whatever announcement gets made in the next couple of weeks. And there are a lot of weird things going out there. Um, if you start shopping around, you'll probably see RTX 3050s, RTX 2060s, and GTX 1660s all in the same $430 to $490 price range, which is weird because these are three completely different generations of cards. <laughs> and uh, the 2060, you know, if you're looking at raw gaming performance, is as much as 20% faster for 1080p gaming. Uh, it's got a healthy 15, 17% lead in frame rates at 1440p gaming. So, you know, I'm not saying buy one. You know, I'm not saying buy one now, but boy, you know, take a look at the numbers that are available mm -hmm. for the cards that are shipping. And it's just a really weird collection of cards. Um, you know, so, you know, I, I laugh because somebody's like, you should get a 3050. I'm like, I have a 1080 Ti. I have to get at least a 3080 Ti to have comparable gaming performance. And again, <laughs> I'm not spending. I, I paid more for at least one of the cars I've bought in the last 10 years. Right. Or for <laughs> less for at least one of the cards I've bought in the last 10 years than that card and uh, would cost me right now. So, um, you know, and as you mentioned earlier, things are going to get really interesting in the next year as far as chip production because all of the neon that was coming out of Ukraine has suddenly ended. You know, I'm going to keep my uh, so 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 the the there's good news for right. now, but the magic yes. eight ball says the future is cloudy. Uh, is, is what this sounds like. Yeah, try again later. <laughs> yeah. Try again later. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I was, we, yeah, the, the whole neon thing came up, and I may have said some words that my mother would not have approved of loud enough mm. uh, that my wife may have suggested that I tone it down. Um, but the, uh, the uh, yeah, it's, it's really crazy, right? Because it seems like demand is easing. The fact, let me say it again, the fact that you can actually go out and buy a card without spending hours hunting is yeah. great right and, that is fantastic and honestly these these prices are painful but they're not as painful as some of those ebay prices would which was the only way you could even get a card sure. uh, for a while so yes so if you're like stuck and you have to have it and it's like i'll just spend the money well uh, wow you can actually do that if you're you're trying to spend a reasonable amount of money and eh, not quite there yet for all the cards we're not there that's yet, what it sounds but... like yeah. We're closer. And, you know, it's like I said, it's been really interesting. Like, I don't know where all these 2060s and 1660s are coming from, but, you know, somebody must have found a bunch of stuff in, in a warehouse somewhere and is cutting it loose. So, um, I'm, yeah, I would say 
wait as long as you can, dot, 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 up until the point where prices start creeping up. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how helpful that is for everybody, but, you know, it's a, it's nice to see. Like, if, you, if you've been desperate for a GPU and just getting really ticked off because you haven't been able to buy one, well, you should be able to buy one right now. You yeah. may not be happy and, about uh, the price, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess. I know, uh, I know, and, and you all, I'm going to steal your line here, because now in stock.net is always the, the place to go to, yes. to shop around as, as well. And we'll have that link in the show notes as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's good. Like it, it's really you know, if you have a micro center near you, they have cards in stock, but you're gonna have to go into the store. Uh, some of the prices on Amazon are good. Some of the prices on Amazon look like they haven't heard the news about the eBay prices coming down. And eBay is always a crapshoot. You may get a fantastic deal if if somebody screws up and ends an auction mm -hmm. at three in the morning on a Wednesday. Well, shoot, Amazon's yeah. almost as bad as eBay on on stuff with resellers these days. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's move on to something that I think we can all agree on, that quadcopters are cool. Yes. But, sure. but sure. quadcopters also are sometimes loud. They and hurt my ears. One objection is noise, especially when it comes to quadcopters delivering things, you know, because the drone delivery future we were all promised, but how? It's really going to play out. I love out. the idea. I love the idea of drone delivery, Sarah. But if I'm getting my meal at night, are my neighbors going to be okay with that? It's kind of well, you know sure. I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah. outside of normal standard working hours, people don't expect <laughs> to hear leaf blowers, and they don't expect to hear quadcopters either. <laughs> exactly. Leaf blowers descending from the sky at basically airborne like, leaf blowers. Nightmare. That's what a quadcopter. Is. My worst nightmare. Well, CNET reports that NASA's innovative advanced concepts may have found and funded a solution. MIT aerospace engineering professor Stephen Barrett and the MIT Electric Airface Initiative have been working on a silent solid state drone. The aircraft uses a series of electrodes beneath the wings to create a high voltage field. This accelerates what? nitrogen molecules in the air, which then propels the plane. It's small, might be best for vertical takeoff and landing in urban areas, you know, just, you know, where you don't have a whole lot of uh, a wiggle room as far as taking off and landing. Perfect for package deliveries. We've been waiting for this for quite some time, but the folks in urban areas really are the ones that have to think about how this is going to work out the most. Of course, NASA is interested in it for Mars and uh, space exploration in general, but the fewer moving parts the fewer things to go wrong. But we would like silent burritos delivered to us at 9 p.m., everybody. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. This is a yeah. thing. NASA wants your Mars. We, all want. we want silent burritos. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want the burrito. I mean, it won't be silent while I'm eating it, <laughs> but it will be silent when it uh, when it lands in my backyard. Baird's team will receive $175,000 in phase one of NIAC funds to develop the technology over a nine month period. And then they'll work on improving efficiency, also flying time and do some outdoor tests to make sure that the proof of concept indeed works. Yeah, because this this thing can't fly for very long, hence urban areas, right? You can, you're not going to be going over rural distances. Uh, and they've only tested it inside where the air is calm. So they need, they need to get get it to fly yeah. outside where you got, you know, wind gusting. Up. Let's talk an ice storm, everybody. And yeah, then yeah. let's see how this goes. So, so lots of things to work out, but uh, silent, silent. Drones, uh, it 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 could get over one of the objections to drone deliveries, um, perhaps, maybe not the only one, but it's some cool technology and cool science anyway. I mean, listen, noise pollution is something that uh, is already an issue, and depending mm -hmm. on where you live, uh, it it could it can be uh, pretty restrictive as far as your happiness goes. So yeah, I think this is really cool. All right, let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. Jerry asked, I'm just wondering why you're changing the format of GDI DTNS, meaning that the times and kind of how we're formatting it. Jerry says, I kind of like GDI as pre and post show for DTNS as it is now. Yeah, if you only get Daily Tech News Show, uh, you may not realize that a change is coming. And no change is coming to Daily Tech News Show. What's happening is our live stream is going to start 15 minutes earlier, starting on Monday, and then... When we do that, we are also going to start the show with DTNS. So we'll start the live stream with the GDI theme song. We'll say hi to everybody, but we're going to go right into Daily Tech News Show to start. And the idea behind that is 
we've done a survey on this for years and there's a split in the audience. Some people like the way it is, mostly because that's always been the way it is. But a lot of people are like, yeah, I don't listen to GDI because I want to just get into the Daily Tech News Show and I don't always mm -hmm. have time for everything else. If we start with Daily Tech News Show on Good Day Internet, that means you can choose when you want more, but the days when you don't have time, once you get to the end of the 30-minute show, you can bounce out and maybe save the rest for later. But you've got the most essential stuff at the top. It's classic journalism. Tell them the most yeah. important stuff first. Uh, so that's why we're switching it. I mean, not to say GDI fodder is not important, but yes, uh, we also ha have had folks say, you know, sometimes on GDI before the show, you say you're going to talk about something after the show, but then you don't because, you know, mm -hmm, there's been a whole show it. in between. So yeah. I think this this is kind of helping our brains stay the most focused possible, we think. And if you've ever been like, you know what, I don't need to get Good Day Internet from Patreon because I just want DTNS. Well, now it's you can you can just go get it from Patreon and, and you'll get it right off the top every time. So if that's been an objection to you supporting us on Patreon, well, that objection has been removed. Well, as always, your feedback is appreciated. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com is where you can send us thoughts on format changes or anything that we talk about on the show and, you know, strength and numbers. Uh, thank you in advance. Speaking of Patreon, I also wanted to extend a special thanks to Justin Zellers. Justin is one of our top lifetime supporters for DTNS. So, Justin, today is your day. Woo, Justin. Thank you, Justin, Justin for hanging out with Justin, us. Justin, Justin. We still need 11 patrons to bring us back up to the level of February. Our, our March level is 11 below February. Just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make March Madness work for you. Uh, also, thanks to Patrick Norton for being with us today and bringing the knowledge on GPUs and everything else. Uh, Patrick, let folks know where they can keep up with your work. As always, uh, just follow me on Twitter at Patrick Norton or hang out with Roger, Roger, Robert Heron and I, not Roger Chang and I. Um, no one wants to hear Roger Chang and I whine. Uh, <laughs> but Robert Heron and I. I think I, plenty of people would. That would be a podcast. The dad cast. I'm digressing and I'm supposed to do this in like 10 seconds. AVXL.com or just. I'm sorry you're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never mind, Patrick. They'll, they'll it's a, I've cut him off right at the T's too. AVXL.com. AVXL.com. Uh, we're going to keep reminding y'all because we know we're going to have a few questions about it. So we'll just keep hammering in. We are changing our format starting Monday, March 14th. And this has to do with daylight savings time starting in the U.S. on Sunday, March 13th. We will be live starting Monday, March 14th, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. That's 20 hundred UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. If you have any questions, let us know. Hopefully you get it. Now tomorrow, science correspondent Nikki Ackermans has the monthly science highlights. That'll be a fun thing. And we'll be back on Monday. Have a great weekend, everyone. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer, Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer, Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker, Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and host, Rich Droppolino. Video producer and Twitch producer, Joe Kuntz. Associate producer, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. News host, writer, and producer, Jen Cutter. Science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator, Zoe Detterding. Our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scott Swan, BioCow, Captain Kipper, Steve Guadarrama, Paul Reese, Matthew J. Steve and JD Galloway. Modern video hosting by Dan Christensen. Video feed by Sean Way. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A, Acast, and Len Peralta. Live art performed by Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Trace Gaynor. Patreon support from Dylan Harari. Contributors to this week's show included Nika Monfort, Terrence Gaines, Justin Robert Young, and Patrick Norton. And our guest this week was Jennifer Briney. And thanks to all our patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this brawl. <laughs>